you have to stand for me? How are you all doing today? Ooh, I see already have some people on. Hi, Sue. Yes, your, grand, your granddaughter is watching. I'm not there. Hi, Susan. Hi. Hi, Jasmine. Hi, Georgia. Steve and Mommy. <laughs> I'm so happy to see so many of you already. So how are you today? Are you excited to be painting with me a beautiful giraffe? Yeah, that's what we will be doing today. We are going to be painting and draw, drawing and painting a beautiful giraffe. But it's not going to be a boring, normal giraffe. It's going to be, as I call it, a fairy tale giraffe. Because after drawing it, we are going to be adding in some beautiful sparkling colors to make it even more beautiful. And we might even add some different pieces like, I don't know, maybe we can add some hair to the giraffe, why not? Bring your imagination today, okay, as always. Let me see who else is on. Ooh. Hi, Levi, Nana and Mommy. <laughs> Hi, Barra! Hi, Poppy and Gillian! Hello, Nathan! Hello, Flo! Amelie, hello, darling! So nice to see so many of you! Music is really loud! Is that okay now? Can you hear me properly now? Otherwise, I'm going to be switching off. Hi, Sophie! <laughs> So let me know. Let me know if the music is okay now. Hi, Maya and Lana. Hello, Camelia. What a beautiful name. So many of you. So, for those of you that um, is the first time that you're joining, I'm Stephanie. I'm very happy to be doing this with you. So, as I was saying, we will be doing and painting a beautiful giraffe today. But, there is something I want you to do as well, you know that. I want you to promise me that once your work is finished, you will give it a name. Yes, I want you to name your painting today. At the end, when it's finished, because when it's finished, you can see what name is best suited, okay? This is something that my granddad just second. Let me, yeah, I think I'm going to be switching off the music then, yeah? I think it's better, yes? Yes. Hi, Sienna. Hi, Aria. Oh, we have a little girl, a little girl of only four. Okay, I switched off the music. <laughs> Usually when I do art, I always have music, so I thought it would be nice, but obviously for the life, it's not good. I'm still getting the hang of it, of this live session, so I was experimenting and trying, but thank you for letting me know that you couldn't hear me properly. Hopefully, now everything is fine, okay? I will keep the music for when I do the videos then. Okay, so as I was saying uh, very shortly, thank you everybody for saying hello in the meantime. I want you to name your painting. This is something that my granddad, my granddad was also um, an artist. Let me just take on a little bit. Yeah, today the technology is failing me. <laughs> so my granddad told me many, many, many years ago, he was a, a great and amazing painter. He painted uh, churches and houses. He did painting just like this one. And he told me one thing I remember, very important, that he taught me. He said, Stephanie. Whenever you do a painting, you need to name it at the end when it's done. Look at it, look at it closely and give it a name because that will make the painting even more beautiful and unique. Because every painting you do, remember I always say this, every painting you do is unique just like you are. Because there's, n there's no other painting like, you, like yours anywhere in the world, just like, just like there's no another person like you in the world, right? Okay, so if I we are all ready, 
I think I said a lot to everyone already. We get ready. Everybody, I you just say hello. For those of you that haven't done, didn't do that yet, please say hello in the comments so I know that you're watching and I can say hello back. So you can all hear me properly now, yeah? Just let me know now is everything okay. Okay. We are going to be putting... Hi, Kelly! A little Hello, if I remember correctly. So nice to see you here. Let me make sure that I want you guys to see properly. We'll give it a few seconds to the camera to adjust. Yeah, you all can see? Wonderful. So today, I will be using mainly watercolor and maybe a little bit of crayons or oil pastels. You feel free to use any paint, any color that you have available, okay? You don't have to use strictly watercolors like I am. You can even do the oil painting just in crayons or pastels if you have, even color pencil. If you do have paint, if you do have watercolor, by all means, use them and you can do it with me, okay? And we are ready to go. Okay, now, we are going to be doing step by step the giraffe. Hi, Sienna! <laughs> I will be using a black marker so you can see properly. But you feel free to use a pencil. By all means, if you want to use straight away a black marker as well, you do that. I don't want you to worry about making mistakes or, or not doing it right. Remember that what you're going to be doing on the paper is your drawing, your painting, and it's a fairy tale giraffe. So it doesn't have to be exact, it doesn't have to look like this one. You can add your bits and pieces. You can make it different. Just just I want you to relax, feel, feel free, and make a, a fairy tale giraffe, use your imagination, okay? And have fun. That's what we have to do, okay? All right, so, when we draw big animals, some people like to start from the top, some they like to outline the, the face first. We're going to start from the nose, yep. So, you are ready? You all have your pencils? Or black marker at hand. Okay, the first thing we are going to do is this. Kind of a little drop. It looks like, like a water drop, right? And we are going to do another one just... I just need to move a little bit. Yes. I have your Tandemilia. Oh, you've been here before. Oh, you were looking forward to that. Thank you so much, Ruth. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Remember, and nothing has to be perfect, okay? This is a fairy tale giraffe. That's the point. It doesn't have to look like a real giraffe at all. A little bit, maybe. Okay? So, you have your little drops. This is the, the nostrils. Now, on top of these drops, we do something like this. And then, you're going to connect the two. I'm, gonna, I'm making it as simple as possible. This is a little bit of a challenge. can be, but I chose it because I am sh I'm sure, I'm sure you're going to do a fantastic job. Okay, if you got this, now we're going to go down on the side. See, even mine is not perfect. Okay. If at any point, um, as usual, Facebook was playing up a little bit. So if at any point you can't see or hear me properly, just do let me know, okay? I have my technician in the other room looking after the, the children, maybe 
can help me. Yeah, literally Facebook is playing out a bit. Okay, now we are going to do this. It's like a smile, okay, to connect everything. Alright, now we are going to go just after the smile and we are going to add another smile, something like this. My marker also is not working as it should today. See, it's simple, we make it simple. <laughs> you are good? Okay, now we are going to start going up, okay? Let's start from the right side, my right side, okay? So, go a little bit up here, and you do the same on the other side. Just a little bit bigger, if you like. It's a bit out of focus, oh dear. How is Facebook? My screen looks okay, but the way he, you see it, I'm, I, I'm not sure. Uh, Facebook was doing some updates yesterday and everything was a little bit uh, plain up this morning. So when I did the test, it was working okay. I hope, I hope that everything is going to be adjust it soon. Sometimes the camera takes a little bit focus. But I promise you guys, for the next time I'll try to find some other program or something that we won't have this problem again, okay? I hope you can still see more or less how it's... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. Okay, now we're going a little bit up like this. Yeah, I can see that sometimes it goes out of focus, yeah. Uh, Facebook doesn't like me. <laughs> and then we go up on the other side. So, this side. Oh, thanks, Camellia, for letting me know you can see okay. <laughs> I want to give you guys the best. But unfortunately, with the, I can't control Facebook. Thank you, Katie, for letting me know as well. So, now, okay, now let's do this. It's going to be easy for you this way. We leave the outside for the moment. Let's go back inside. Just on, we're going here. Okay. And we go like this. Okay? And we do the same on this side. So I, I, I'm sure your giraffe is, start, is starting to take shape. <laughs> then we go up here. One and two. And guess what we're going to do now? The eyes. I know I should be looking at the camera, but I, sorry if I don't look at you all the time, <laughs> but I try to keep an eye on the image to make sure that, that you guys see me okay. My husband is always making fun of that. You should look at the camera. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to go under, and there you go. And we made the eyes ready. Now, on top of this, let's do something like this. Okay, we're going to one more. Now the eyelashes. My giraffe has big eyelashes. Eyelashes, did I say the correct word? Yeah. I hope so. Ooh. Looks like a little, bit, a little bit angry giraffe now. <laughs> Now, I'm 
inside the eye, I want you to draw a little circle like this. And I want you to leave it white inside, okay? Don't color it in. And under the eye, you can do this. And also leave it white for now. Okay? How are you all doing? Am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? Now we go up. Can do this. Okay. Okay, now we are going this way. We are going to be doing the outside again okay so here what is your eyelash eyelashes duck and duck see how simple it is susan perfect you mean you can see me perfect yeah <laughs> thank you and now is the moment for see once in a while i remember to look at you guys now is the moment for the ear. Now, you do as you like now. I'm going to do like this. I mean, you can do them big, you can do them small. Remember that this is your giraffe, yeah? It doesn't have to look exactly like mine. If along the way you want to do it different, by all means, you go and do that. And on the other side... If you hear screaming in the background, it's my kids, it's my children, <laughs> two I have, two, <laughs> playing with daddy outside. I can't really told them to, to be in the garden while I do my session. <laughs> and that's my big giraffe here. Yeah? Are you all guys doing okay? Do you find it difficult? Do you find it? Are you having fun? I hope you are having fun already, okay? Because that's my main purpose of this. We are also learning some things on the way. I'm going to teach a little thing about colors today. Okay, now we have to do this, this too. So we are going to go up from here and one. And another one. Oops. There you go. Starting to look like a proper giraffe. <laughs> now let's add something to the ear. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. Now I want you to go back to the nose. Poppy, are you loving it really? Oh. I picked your favorite animal, Poppy. Really? What are the chances? Samantha and Alan, you're enjoying it too. I'm so glad. Thank you so much for letting me know. This gives me, makes me very happy. Okay, I will say, now we go back to the nose. We are going to add a little something. A little something, something to the nose. We are going to go all the way up. And do something, again, it doesn't have to be exactly the same, it's just to add a little something. See, and you finish here, just here in the middle. So you go all the way up there and finish here in the middle. It can be a curved line, it can be even a straight line, if, a straight line, if, you, if you like. Annabelle, you're loving it too. So glad you're here. Okay, now we are going to start adding some more pattern. I want to do this now. Okay, you see at the bottom of the ear, do this. Close it. There you go. And then keep going a little bit, a little bit, like this. Then you go just, let's say, in the middle of the nose here and we add oh, my marker we add a little pattern yeah you 
Guess let's how we're gonna be color it in in different color. <laughs> it's really fun, Rom Roman. Is that your name? <laughs> Is that said correctly? Okay, and also let's do this. Aha. You're already over the most challenging part. Again, hello. <laughs> no, you're there, not there. <laughs> you're already over the most challenging part and I'm sure you've done amazing. So everything else from now on is going to be really much easier. Let's add one more line here. And I'm going to do this to mine. But again, you can add different patterns if you like. Huh? I am going to color the nostrils black. If you like, you can do the same. Now, the eyes of our giraffe. You can color the black if you like, for example. But I would suggest you leave this little circle that you've done inside, white. And if you've done this like me, also leave this white. It's going to give a nice effect to the giraffe's eyes, all right? So what I'm going to do, I am going to color them black, yes. But if you decide to use another color, you can do that later, yeah? I just want you to see now how it looks. There you go. You can add some also bigger eyelashes. See? That's what we're gonna do. Now let's finish with the body of the giraffe. The body is really simple. We are gonna just go down like this. And leave a little space at the bottom here because we're going to be adding some flowers here, okay? So make sure you have some space. Now, inside the giraffe's body and also a little bit here, I'm going to be adding some um, patterns like this. Okay? Now, follow me. I'm going to be doing, for example, you can do some squares some triangles, some rectangles, just anything that comes to your mind. And if you can, between one shape and the other, leave some space here. See, I left some space. Because after we might go and color in between those shapes, okay? And I'm going to be adding something here, for example, and here, something like this. Any shape you like. When using a black marker to the way just like me. <laughs> okay, there you go. I'm gonna add now, see the chicks, the giraffe's chicks. I'm gonna add some little patterns here as well. A little bit smaller, obviously, just like this, see? Doesn't even have to be a precise shape. Could be even dots. Could be a poor giraffe. There you go. I'm going to be coloring the other eye. And then we're going to be adding some plants and flowers at the bottom. And would you like me to add a butterfly as well. You could add a butterfly. This is a fairy giraffe after all. You could add a ladybird. And 
And again, I'm going to be doing Okay. Ooh, my paper is coming off. Now, let me see. We are going to add some big plants. Something like this. If you are using a big paper like me, but we are trying to go big, okay? Whether it's the flowers or the plants, gonna be even easier to color them in. Now, if you finish your giraffe, the shape and the everything, if you've done it with the pencils, if you want, you could now just go over all the lines and go with the black marker or black felty pens, anything you like. But you don't have to. I mean, you can even do that at the end after we color it in. Huh? Shall we add some big flowers here at the bottom? What do you say? Yeah? Just like this one, yeah? Yeah. Otherwise, what kind of fairy tale giraffe it would be if there's no flower around, right? I can't wait to start color it in. So uh, when I done this, my little girl suggested that we add some hair to the giraffe. We might, I might just do that today and see how it looks like. <laughs> so this is my one of my flowers. I'm gonna add a little stem down here. And I am going to add something like this, another flower. And this one. I'm going to put the big leaf here. It's like a heart. And then... On the side I want to do, oh, I love this kind of plant. It's very fun to color it in, and I'm going to show you how I color that one. So you do just something like that on the side, and then do this kind of big, big leaf. But as you go up, try to go smaller and smaller. So you start big at the bottom, then you go a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah? <laughs> and let's see, I might add the little flower as well, I like it. just to like it down there. You can add all the flowers you want, all the kind of flowers you like. Let's see, let's do some big petals. What do you say? Shall we add a little butterfly? Like a danda? <laughs> I think I'm gonna do a little butterfly, yes. Let's do the butterfly. I hope I'm not covering the paper when I draw in this. And we do just big, big. Wings. Oops. Yeah. 
I'm going to do some, yes, my butterfly has dots. I do something like this. Oh, am I going to be too fast? Sorry, darling. Let me, I, I'm going to wait a few minutes. Where are you? Let me know. Which bit are you? Are you? I did the butterfly a little bit too fast, maybe the flower. So first we, I added this big flower with big petal. Tell me at which point you are. I'm just going to be adding some little dots on top of my flower here. And while you catch up, I'm just going to do one more square here. And that's all. And on the flower, Roman, okay. Oh, you are there then. You are there. <laughs> so the flower, as I said, if you're using a big paper like me, feel free to go big leaf, big flower. They're going to be more fun to color it in. Later we might add another butterfly, we might add other bits and pieces. So for those of you that use the pencil again, <laughs> if you like, you can, in the meantime, while everybody's catching up, you can go over with a black marker or um, a dark colored marker or felty pen and just go over the line so Raman, Ra Raman am I pronouncing it right I hope if you are ready to do the butterfly I suggest you start with the body I'm gonna color this in the meantime just like that and in the meantime I give you a few minutes to catch up I am going to prepare my water my watercolor I give a little tip. Oh, Sienna! <laughs> Sienna, darling. I want to give you a little tip. When you, um, if you use paint or watercolor, especially, um, when you watch, and on, especially if you watch an online art session, use something if you can, and if you find something like this on palette because it's much quicker to use if you compare to the little tubes, you know, because then you have to open, pull the color, and then close it again. So with this one, something like this is much, much easier. So I'm going to grab my <coughs> brushes. So we've done most of our drawing by right now. Let me see. Hi Kelly, what's happened? I have a question mark from you. I, I, everything is okay? Let 
me know. <laughs> Next step, we are going to be coloring our giraffe. Now, I am going, you can use all the colors of the rainbows if you like. Here I use a lot of different colors. What I'm going to do today for the body of the giraffe, I'm going to be choosing two main colors. Now, I want to show you, this is a color wheel, okay? I'm going to be putting it here so if I don't cover <laughs> the giraffe. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to be choosing two colors. They are called complementary colors. What does that mean? I'm not going to go in details. I'm just going to tell you briefly. Color, this is a color wheel. On one side, we have what we call warm colors. These are mainly cold colors. When you put two colors together, if you choose, um, if you choose two colors that are opposite, on the color wheel. Example, this red here and this light blue, which is cyan, it's called, but let's call it light blue and red. You see, they are opposite each other. Then we have, for example, blue and orange. Okay? Or this um, fuchsia, bright pink and light green. See, they are opposite each other. So when you want to choose two colors only, if you want them to pop out and look and make each other uh, look more beautiful, try to choose colors that are opposite each other in the color wheel. These are called um, complementary colors, okay? Because they complement each other. They make each other look more beautiful. So this is what I'm going to do for the body here of the giraffe. I'm going to be choosing two colors and I am going to be choosing blue and orange today. Okay, see? They are opposite each other. So again, Sienna, you know about complementary colors. They are wonderful. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm going to be choosing orange and blue. You could choose, for example, pink and this light blue or green and pink. But don't you worry about this too much. I just want to uh, tell you a little, a little extra today. You did a butterfly. Perfect. The frame is frozen. Oh dear. I mean, the, the image is frozen. Well, that depends, might depend on your internet connection. If everybody else is still seeing me okay, unfortunately, there's nothing I can do. Okay, so let's start coloring the, the I was saying the butterfly, <laughs> the giraffe, okay? So again, I'm going to be choosing, let me see if I can, ah, oh, there you go. I'm going to be choosing orange and blue for the body. We'll start from the body, okay? So first thing, because I'm using watercolor, I'm going to wet my brush. Oops. My, there you go. And we need to get going. And as always, because it's, if you're using watercolor like me, watercolors like me, if you want the color to be um, brighter and stronger, put very little water on your brush, okay? If you want it more gentle, then by all means, put more water. See, if I think that the color, as I see, the color was too pale for my liking. <laughs> I like bright color. So what I did, I went again without wetting the brush again. I just took a little bit more paint. And once it's dry, you can always go back. 
Now, what I'm going to do, it's another little trick. I want you to remember, if you already know that you're going to be painting a lot of things with blue, instead of going and washing your brush and then going back and changing color, just do the bits that you think you're going to be doing in blue. Oh, Bella, what's wrong? Sorry, just reading the comments. Is there something wrong with the image? Ah, as I said, Facebook has been playing up a little bit. So see, I'm going to be doing some bits and pieces with this blue. And then I'm going to be passing to orange. Don't stress too much about going within the edges, okay? Just relax and just paint and just go ahead. If you chose two colors like me, then in between the same color leave one. So you do like, for example, if you chose blue and orange like me, blue, then the next, the one next to it doing orange and then blue again and then orange. So it's nicer, it's like it pops up more, looks brighter if the colors are opposite each other. You see, each square is a different color. But obviously you can't do that for all the, the pattern, all the squares. I am very, very curious to be, to see your, your beautiful painting today. So I'm going to be doing another blue here. Just need a little bit more water. And as I said, you don't have to choose two, just two colors like me. You can choose here, for example, see I chose all different colors. Do that. Absolutely do that. I am going to be doing the small one as well with a little bit of blue. If you have a little, if you've done this, like me. You could do this with a marker or felty pens if it's too tiny. The screen is a bit, is a bit blurry. Um, Sienna, uh, I know. The quality of Facebook recently is not that good. I have to say, I am new to this, all this technology and Facebook Live, so I try to do my best. But there's nothing I can do for Facebook, unfortunately. Okay, I hope you guys are having fun. I think I'm going to be adding some blue on the top here as well. Yeah. So I'm going to be doing this and this blue. One and two. And feel free to let me know which color have you chosen, yeah? Uh, let me see what else I can use the blue. I am going to be using it for the nose, yes. My nose is going to be blue. Again, if you have um, fancy pens or marker, you could, for example, do the little bits here with those. If it's going to be easier, might be easier to color them in because they're so tiny. <laughs> there you go. But as I said, it's a little bit too pale here, so I'm going to be adding a little bit.
And if you're using watercolor, by all means, you can go over again, let it dry a little bit, then you go over again, and you ca can add a little bit more uh, color. Gillian, your giraffes are looking great. That's wonderful. So I have to take you that. Guys, let me know which color you use. I'm so curious. <laughs> okay. I'm going to be doing this. Also blue. Okay. Now I'm going to go to orange. Let's see where we can put orange. Uh, see? See how nice blue and orange look? And that's because these two are complementary colors. So we have one warm color, warm, that is orange, and one cold, what is called a cold color, that is blue. There you go. Little bit more orange here. So which paint are you guys using? Watercolor like me? Anybody using watercolor? Or are you using um, maybe different paint? Maybe acrylic? Maybe you're using crayons? And maybe you're using pastas. Pastas are also great. And then a bit of orange here. choice of color colors do you no How do you think it's looking? <laughs> Acrylic and crayons. Perfect. Acrylic and crayons. Acrylic have very nice bright color. I love acrylic. Now I'm going to be doing this orange. Yeah. This bit. Now, the space in between here, I left it because I'm going to be doing it some darker color. Okay, maybe black. And now, now I'm going to add a different color. I'm not going to do just these two colors. I'm going to add some yellow here. I like yellow because it gives light to the old paint also blue and yellow are two other colors that go very very well together very well make each other pop out and i chose a very warm yellow I'm going to be finishing this too. I need to get an orange. I forgot about this too here. So, 
hi y'all. How is your giraffe looking? There you go. And one more blue here. Oops. I didn't wash brush my brush properly. You enjoy it? How's your giraffe looking? Okay, a little bit more here. Then I'm going to be taking some darker blue. A little bit darker blue here. For my giraffe ear. So I'm going to be doing the outside, this is the outside of the ears. I'm going to be doing it this dark blue. And the inside, I'm going to be doing it a lighter color, probably yellow again. There you go. A little bit more color I'm going to add here to make it brighter. See, oh, that's that, yes. That's the color I wanted. And here as well, it's a little bit too pale. Okay, needs to dry a little bit. And, ooh, it's already, the time is flying when I'm painting. It's already almost three. See? Oh, look at that, yes. There you go. I'm going to be finishing my giraffe and then I'm going to show you how I paint my big plan here and and flowers. So more autumn. So as a reminder, try when you color in this section, obviously try to do a different color in each section. Okay, like I'm doing. If you want, if you would like your colors to pop out, or maybe you decided to do only one color, that's also fine. Because again, it's your giraffe. Okay, and here, so no, it's just a matter of filling it in all the section that we have been drawing earlier. Okay, I'm going to be filling up this with yellow, and then, I think we are ready to do our um, flowers, and plants, and the butterfly. Yeah, I need a little smaller brush for this. Okay. Yeah, that's the one. Jillian, you have been using felt tips and all the colors. Wonderful. Where did it go? Oh. And so, whoops, way too much water. That's okay. I'm just gonna fill it up like this and wait for it to dry. Okay. Now I'm gonna be taking a dark color. And what is it? Blue. Where is my black? Okay. Dark 
gaps so you could choose a lighter color or a darker color you don't have to choose black but try to choose choose a color that is opposite to the one that you have inside so if you um, color very if you put very bright color inside inside the, um, the body then black goes well because it makes them pop out, see? And if you are left-handed, left-handed like me, <laughs> don't make the mistake I often do. Try, start painting from the right side of your paper so you don't smash it over. <laughs> years and years of drawing and painting and I still do that. We are going to be going slightly over an hour. I hope it's okay. I don't mind. I hope you're okay with that. I never spend the time anyway. <laughs> okay. your giraffe looking. Okay. For the mouse, I'm going to be choosing some, I think, some bright yellow here. Yes. I think I like that. not blurry anymore. I hope you can see me properly. And then I'm going to be coloring this with a light blue. Ah yes, I like a light blue for that. Like this uh, one. This one here. Yeah. Something like but too much water. Yeah, no, it's okay. So this one is more of a pinkish, purple violet giraffe. This is a more warm giraffe. As you can see, I used a lot of warm color. Orange, yellow, uh, orange, yellow, and a brighter yellow. But I put together also cold colors, yeah? And there you go. <laughs> now I had meant to to do this bit light blue like this one, but because I didn't clean my brush properly, I mixed blue, light blue, and yellow. And as a result, I got a light green. And I'm going to leave it. Why not? And this one became yellow as well. Wonderful. Now I'm going to 
show you how I paint this big um, plant. Especially if you're using paint, but even if you're using, for example, crayons, I'm going to show you. You know what? Let me see. green okay now oil pastel depending on the uh, type of paper you're using will give you different texture a different results so if you're using uh, for oil pastel is very good to use watercolor paper so I used darker green and then I'm putting uh, a lighter green instead. Okay. And where they meet, where the dark green and light green meet, go a little bit over. I want the color to go over each other a little bit, so they're going to be blending much better. And then at the end, you use the yellow, and you go all the way up. Okay. You could do something like this, for example, and you have a beautiful tree color. You can also, at the end, go with the yellow, go all over the leaf once again to give it a yellowish tone. If you're using crayons, we are going to do mostly the same. I'm going to do mostly the same. It's better if you use first, first the green color. And when I color with crayon, I like to go in a circle motion like this. I find that the color is lays much, much smoother. Then you go with the light, with the lighter green, which is more of a yellowish green and again you can go over all of it just to give it a little bit more tone oops I think the the border was moving too much Well done, Jasmine. And if you like, send me the picture. I would love to see it, okay? <laughs> and then you go again with, with the yellow. And again, you can go with the yellow to all over the leaves, yeah? Instead, if you're using uh, paint or watercolor, well, mainly watercolor, what we do, what I do, I paint first, I start with a lighter color instead, okay? And then we're going to put the darker color later. So I start painting my leaves yellow. I wash my brush. Then I go with, uh, I'm showing you the brush, I go with this lighter green, over, you can do that, and if you have acrylic it works even better, you can leave it dry a little bit, and then you go with the darkest one, on top. Just remember that watercolor 
has you will have different results depending on how much water you put. And you can always go back and add the bits and pieces because the watercolor is very flexible. <laughs> okay, and that's how I painted my leaves. And I'm going to do the same for this flower. This flower I'm going to paint it. Let me see. I'm going to paint it pink, light pink. So what I'm going to do, I am going to start... That's how I'm going to do the list. I'm going to start with the light pink. And there's one more trick that I want to show you. Just in case you're about to go. Just wait for one more flower and then... <laughs> And now I'm going to go with the darkest pink, this one here, I'm going to choose this one here. It's a bit more, to see the difference. Yeah? See what I'm doing there? <laughs> You can do even some here. And now, if you have, again, crayons or um, oil pasta, look at this one. You see this one big? Inside, first I'm going to go with the oil pasta or again if you have crayons. And I'm going to do the little lines that you find on the leaves with the oil pasta, just like this. Okay. And, and then, now I'm going to go in with the watercolor. This only works with the watercolor. Don't you worry if you don't have watercolor now, but just watch. So for the future, you know this little trick. Now I'm going to take red. Now, see what's happening? Do you know what this happens? Because watercolor is a water-based paint. I use oil pasta and water and oil, they kind of push each other away. And that's why the oil pasta is pushing the watercolor away. So the, the pattern, oh, I splashed a little paint in my mouth. The pattern you've done with the water, uh, with the oil pasta stays, you see? So when you go over, especially if you put a lot of water, when you go over, you will not cover. You will not cover the, past, the oil pasta at all. But you will have a beautiful pattern. And there you go. How do you like that? And I am going to do... And you can do this also with crayons, okay? Crayon, wax crayon also works. I am going to do the same with this one. I'm going to do some pattern with the oil pasta. I've chosen the blue oil pasta. Okay. And let's see what happens. And now I'm going to take a light... What should I take? Light blue light green i'm gonna take this beautiful oops aquamarine color and as you can see the same happening see so when you do this choose um for example a dark color for the crayon or oil pastel 
and then a light color for the for the water color or the opposite see here I done darker blue and then water color with light blue here I done a bright yellow with the oil pastel and then bright dark red with the water color And there you go. Now I'm going to do the same with these big leaves here. I mean, not with the watercolor, I mean, with the oil pastel, but with a different shade. I use a different green, it's more of a yellowish green. You can also mix them up. See? And there you go. So that's how I paint my flower and how I paint my leaves. And one last thing. I'm going to do the same for my butterfly. Now, for my butterfly, I am going to choose... Yes. This bright yellow. Here. Again, I'm going with the oil pasta. You can use... Bye, Bella! <laughs> You're done! Wow, wonderful! So I'm going to be coloring with you the butterfly and then I think you're all set to be finishing, if you haven't done already so, to be finishing your beautiful giraffe all on your own. Don't forget, you have to name it. You have to give it a name. You can give a name to the painting, a name to the giraffe, and please, please send me, send me the picture, okay? Don't forget. I want to see your beautiful creation and I want to post them on my page. Now my butterfly is going to be violet. See? The same is happening as before. The pattern that I've done with the water, with the oil pasta. And there you go. this butterfly just like this yeah I went a little bit over the edge here but never mind is done as well. Christina, you also done. Why? Wonderful. Okay, so I can see that most of you are done. So, I think we are finished. I'm not going to be calling it on because I'm going to be doing it alone otherwise. But the important thing is I'll show you what, what you can do with this beautiful giraffe and these beautiful flowers. And, and the plants, okay? And I want to see, I absolutely want to see your painting. So, 
I want to thank you all for joining. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you had fun. I surely had a lot of fun painting and drawing with you. Uh, I will see you all next weekend. And in the meantime, please, please, don't forget to name your paintings. Give it a name. You can name the giraffe, for example. Sign it. Every true artist always sign its work, his work, okay? And then send me a lot, a lot of pictures like you always do because I'm going to take them all together and I'm going to uh, post them on my page. Yeah, now I'm really happy that you enjoyed it, okay? Okay, so I'll see you all next weekend and for now, bye.